Well, there's only one way to get over this thing, and that's actually to go under it. Oh. Ow, ow, ow. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Wednesday night and I've just finished my first proper run back since the Estelle Eureka. So today seems like a perfect opportunity to discuss health versus fitness and the recovery cycle I go through after every race. I've also got to sign up to a mountain race on Saturday and it's not the one in Romania. So we'll talk more on that as the episode goes along. You'll find out at the end of the video if I get a place or not, but not before you join me in Dolby Forest for a beautiful run. We might even get some snow because the Met Office reckons it'll be sub-zero temperatures. Right, let's begin with what I've been doing since the weekend because I think this will explain how I recover from races which is something I used to struggle with and I think a lot of people still do. So the first 48 hours post-race are vital. Getting refueled properly, getting plenty of sleep and only running to aid the healing process is very important. A little bit of light strength and conditioning really helps in there, but I just generally try and keep my body moving so it doesn't seize up. This means Jason, my coach, scheduled Monday as a 40 minute recovery run. This was to get blood flow going around the body and aid the recovery. Tuesday was some strength and conditioning, recruit some more muscle fibers and just stretch things out a little bit. Then tonight was that 60 minute run. The first almost return back to training. We had within that, for 90 second slight gradient efforts. Now it's important these were at a tempo effort, nothing higher, just so I don't task the body, but using a gradient to do this means that you can really open up the joints, get the muscles stretched out, and if there's any tightness in there, it can release things off. Tomorrow will be some more strength and conditioning. Friday, another 40 minute easy run before Saturday, which you're gonna be coming with me to Dolby Forest for, is that 90 minute moderate effort and the first return to some proper training and that is where we're going to carry this discussion on from because I need to get refueled get my beauty sleep as you can tell um, so I will see you all from Dolby Forest so bloody cool I can't bring myself to leave the car but we really need to get cracking because I've got a race to book at 10 a.m it's now half past eight so we're really cutting it fine it's the UTS which stands for Ultra Trail Snowdonia it's in July and it's now part of the Ultra Trail World Series which not only means it'll attract an elite field, it's also a qualifier for the UTMB lottery. I'm looking to do the 50K, which includes 10,000 foot of elevation gain. Naturally, it's going around Snowdonia, starts from Lamberis, and it should have some stunning views with epic climbs, descents, and lots of gorgeous mountain scenery. With all this in mind, it's gonna sell out quick. I just hope that it's not gonna sell out before we get to book it. Right, we're going to have to brave this cold. Stumbling home, we don't know where we're going. Should have turned back hours ago. Hours ago. Out of our mind. I guess we're sleeping outside It's still a good time Even in the cold Get out the road, I told you A car's coming, I stop you You know why touched on race recovery earlier and this is such a personal subject what works for me may not work for others but the golden rule is to respect the distance and respect how hard you went out and raced for instance three or four days is enough for me after that nine mile fell race however in 2017 
I needed more like two weeks. That's because of where I was in my development and also because of how hard I found the race. My coach told me that for marathons, you generally need four weeks after your first one, but every marathon you do thereafter, oh, we've got a stop sign. Ah. Another example is my recovery period for marathons. The first one I ever did was four weeks, but my coach has suggested that everyone I do thereafter will knock a week off that recovery period. Of course, that's all dependent on how much it takes out of me on the day and how I'm feeling in the lead up. Again, the important thing is to always listen to your body and read the signs when it's telling you to ease off. Open eye, through the waves cut through me, hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in. Hold tight, hold tight, chemicals collide. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. We're quite deep into the forest now guys and when I get to this point of the run I just want to go off piste. I mean just look around us. It is just open woodland everywhere. There's no one about. Just kind of want to go dart in between the trees and see where it takes us. Maybe one day we will. We'll bring loads of food with us, loads of water and just go off and see where the trails carry us. But the most important takeaway for me is to not kick on until you're fully recovered. It can take anything up to a week to see injuries come through and come to the surface. You're much better off taking a few extra easy days if you're not sure than cracking on with training and having to take two more weeks out later down the line. This is why scheduling races too close together without any thought for the recovery period is a really bad idea. Of course you could go cancel the race, but how often do we actually do that? It's really difficult. Someone's tripped me up. I've had a race booked in, five week period of recovery, thinking I'm okay. A few little niggles will come up and I think, do you know what? I'll push through it, I'll get through the race. Really bad decision for long-term development. Right, we're about to kick on with the moderate part of this run, guys. So I'm gonna have a Lucho Delitos energy block because it's an hour and a half run. And my rule of thumb is for every hour, I need 250 calories. This is about 170, but we've been going at an easy rate so far. So should do me till the end of the session. These are super tasty, really easy to get down and they're actually light on the stomach because I really do struggle with that. Not to mention, they're all natural. So in terms of using it for training, I feel much better with these than I do with gels. Right guys, we're just doing a cool down now before we go book Ultra Trail Snowdonia. So a quick word on the channel and what's gonna happen going forward. I've invested in a MacBook Pro and I'm now using Final Cut Pro. The reason being, I think it's gonna massively up my production quality and the standard of the videos, but mate, what a learning curve it's been. Literally took me two whole days to edit that last video Runner. So if you guys wouldn't mind letting me know what the image quality is like and the sound levels, just because I'm not sure how that's translating from Mac to Windows users. Anyway, we'd better rush back to the car before this race sells out. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Well, this is a problem, isn't it? We're Storm Arwin the other week. You may remember me recording in that. Seems to have really done some damage here in Dolby. Luckily, the VJs have good grip on anything because this is hard work. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at this. They're everywhere. Well, there's only one way to get over this thing and that's actually to go under it. Ow, ow, ow. Oh. Oh dear, it's 20 past 11, so the race has been open for almost an hour and a half already. I'm really concerned we're not going to get in here. Oh, I don't believe it. I've got no signal either. Right, hang on a minute. Okay, we've just driven around Dolby Forest, finally found somewhere with signal, and I think we've entered. Um, I've just heard a ping on my email and what looks like confirmation it's asking me to print it so i think that's it we should be in hello we're happy to confirm your registration to the race uts 50. that's it guys we're in wow really excited about that and that coincides really nicely with my speed work ramping up over the coming weeks we're going to be doing three harder sessions a week now going forward um, and i've got my next 5k benchmark on new year's day so that should keep me honest. Right guys, this will probably be the last vlog before Christmas. So I just want to say to you all, thank you so much for the support throughout 2021. You guys really have kept me going. We've formed a lovely little community here. Um, and I really do appreciate everything that you guys do, getting involved in the comments and uh, supporting the channel. So all the best to you and your families. I hope you have a lovely festive break and I'll catch you all on the other side of it. See you later. Christmas sun without you